Elite Facts presents Five Fascinating Facts About Our Brains by Neurons Storage Neurons are brain cells with an outer membrane and axons which it uses to send signals to other areas of the brain. They do this by creating short spikes of voltage in the outer membrane which then travels along the axons which are like extension leads out into the brain. The signals they send are chemical based and can tell us things like what we're seeing, whether we're hungry and which way we should go. That's the simplified version though. If you look more closely at the code these spikes come in, different spikes could be giving out different types of information. When we look at the complicated things our brains do, like making judgments, looking into the future, reminiscing, we can see that there are populations of neurons working together to create this information. These complex signals are extremely difficult for scientists to work out, as it involves hypothesis and guesswork. There is every likelihood that the information in our minds does not originate in one cell, rather it is spread over populations of cells. What we don't know is how neurons are classified into groups, and it's something we can't measure yet. Today, brain activity is measured using electrodes inserted into the brain, but these can't measure a lot of cells' activity at the same time. Because each neuron uses input from about 10,000 other neurons, we can't monitor all the connections that just one neuron makes. 4. Physical Changes Whenever you learn something new, for example what someone is called, your brain structure alters physically. Scientists don't know how this works, though. It remains a mystery as to what the alterations are, how they work across all the different parts of the brain and its cells, how they somehow store the information, or how they manage to recall the information sometime in the future. Part of the problem is that there are a multitude of types of memory. There's a difference in the brain when we remember things short term, like a number you're about to dial, and things we remember long term, something that happened last year for example. Long-term memories are divided into two types. The first is related to facts and is called a declarative memory. The second, non-declarative, is related to what you may have been doing at a particular time or what you were thinking. It doesn't end there, though, as these two types are subdivided into lots of subtypes, too. The different structures of the brain appear to work with the different types of memory recall, which is why someone who suffers brain damage may lose one type of memory but not others. No matter what type of memory is being used, the majority of scientists agree that the way they are stored remains the same. Memory storage is thought to be dependent upon small connectors in between brain cells called synapses. If two cells are both active at the same moment, the synapse between them becomes stronger and vice versa. If they're not active at the same moment, the synapse is weakened. These changes in the synapses create an association, so the connections can be made between different aspects of something, such as the smell, taste, color, or feel of it. Because the cells used to pick up on one of the aspects are connected to others, we make associations between things. 3. Alzheimer's Brain disorders are particularly scary because we just don't know much about them. Alzheimer's throws up amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles, but we don't know whether they come from the Alzheimer's itself or whether they are a result of the disease. If they do cause Alzheimer's, what can we do to stop them developing in the first place? At present, scientists have not found any way of regrowing brain cells once they've been lost or restoring the function of the brain once it has deteriorated. The 20th century is known as the decade of the brain after President Bush declared it as such in 1990. He was referring to all the things we'd learned about the brain during the century, but was also highlighting that there was still a long way to go before we understood everything. Scientists are still a long way off from knowing how all of the systems in the brain work together. They can explain how different parts work, but not really how they work together. With all the different jobs our brains undertake every day, there really is an awful lot of things to find out. 2. Why do our brains rest? Can you believe that scientists don't actually know why we sleep, even though sleep is something that all humans and animals do? What we do know is that a lack of sleep is incredibly deadly mentally, and that at some point sleep did have some sort of evolutionary benefit, such as acting as a detriment for nighttime activities when dangerous predators were more active. Nowadays, though, sleep accounts for around one-third of our life, and as we have access to artificial light during the dark hours, it seems a bit strange for us to spend such a long time in a defenseless state. 
One theory as to why we sleep so much is that it gives our body a chance to recuperate. But this doesn't add up when you think about how hard the brain is working while we're sleeping. We're not actually really resting. It's almost as if the brain is practicing for what it has to do the next day, working out problems and reinforcing learning. There are noted studies which show learning to be affected if sleep is not involved. This puts the idea of staying up all night to study out the window and has even encouraged high schools to start later in the morning to allow their students to get some more sleep. One. Why we are so unique. Our conscious awareness is what makes us unique, and it is by far the most mysterious part of the brain's processes. It lets us react to what's around us in what appears to be a self-directed method. Each individual has their own thoughts, emotions, likes and dislikes, beliefs, and it's these things that mean we can work out how the world works and work with it. Scientists have no idea how we use incoming information to work out personal responses such as taste and pain. They also don't know how we can create a picture in our minds whenever we want to. They think it's to do with how the sensory sections of the brain are connected to the structures in the midbrain, but they don't really know. One theory is that there is one place in the brain where everything just sorts itself out. There are others who believe in quantum effects. What we do know is that we don't actually know. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.